Hello and welcome. My name's Leanne. I live in Australia and this is my crafty cupboard. Good morning. This morning I'm working on a sashiko table runner. And it's by, the design is by, let's find another bottom here for you. Wagara Flow Sashiko Panel Part 10 by Hitomi Fujita for QH Textiles in 2021. Um, this particular piece I bought as a kit from a store called Quilt Between, no, Stitch, Stitch Between the Bridges. And uh, I stumbled upon their stand at a craft show I went to and was mesmerized because I have done a lot of sashiko stitching, but always just traditional with the indigo background with the sort of ivory colored cotton thread. And uh, this one, <laughs> This stand was filled with sashiko panels all stitched in very vibrant colours and I thought, yes, I have to do that. I want to try that because I tend to always opt for very pale pastel type things to work on and I thought let's go out of our comfort zone here and work with some beautiful colours. So I have done coloured sashiko before um, in Japan you can buy these little kits for what make essentially dishcloths uh, and they tend to be a white thin cotton um, that you stitch together double layered with sashiko and so I've used pretty pinks and variegated pinks and things uh, to make those um, and they're just sitting <laughs> in a drawer because I thought I can't bring myself to use these as a dishcloth um, need to turn them into a quilt or something. There's been so much stitching in them, so much work. But, you know, they've been in my drawer for a very long time now. And I thought, maybe I should get them out. Why not have something of beauty in your kitchen to use? Why not pick up something that brings you joy and satisfaction knowing that you'd made that pretty object. So with Sashiko we want to just do a running stitch and the length of each stitch is usually the length of a grain of rice. Keep in mind Japanese rice is not long grain, it's a, a shorter grain. Now, if you buy a pre-printed panel like this one, your life's easy because you just follow <laughs> what's there. So one of the rules of Sashiko is where the stitches meet, you don't have them touching. So you leave a little gap there. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned, but what you want to do when you're stitching a piece is to find a long line and just simply ignore the pattern, look for the line and stitch along the line. So at the moment, I'm stitching this straight line that runs through there. But you can see all sorts of lines that run through. We've got another straight line that runs down that way. But here, for example, we've got a zigzag line. So you can still work from one edge to the other following the zigzag. Now, if you do pick it up and do a sort of running stitch with it, you do want to sort of smooth it out every now and again, because you want to have it so that it just sits nicely with the fabric, that it's not puckering the fabric up. 
um, and also that it's not too loose. Actually, I've got one there that I can show you. Like here, this is not great. This stitch here is sitting up a little bit from the fabric and there's just a bit too much movement in it. I should have pulled that a little tighter. Now you can see people that do this a lot get very, very fast. Just pleating the fabric. And working super fast. But I like to take my time. I like to work slowly. Everything else in my life is a rush. What I craft is slow. So I'm just pulling that through. Not pulling it super tight. The fabric's a bit gathered. And so I just place it down and smooth it out. Pulling on the fabric will get out any puckers. All right, now I've done that line. I have to find the next line and I'm right here with my thread. So the zigzag line will be the easiest one to do next. So this way. When I cut my thread, I cut it about the length from my fingers to my shoulder. You don't want to cut it too long that you're going to get yourself all tied up and tangled in knots. You also don't want to cut it long um, because it frays. It'll wear here at the needle. And of course the wear and tear of pulling it through the fabric. You don't want to cut it so short that you are constantly having to stop and start and have new threads. So of course this was a method developed to actually stitch textiles together and to create quilted layers, but also could serve as a form of sort of visible mending, you know, that you could patch things together. Now you can do sashiko stitching on anything really. It tends to work nicely on like a nice heavyweight cotton or drill fabric and you want to go for things that are going to give you nice contrast so you can have a dark background fabric with light, um, light or vibrant thread or you can have a light background fabric with colourful thread. It probably could even look lovely with, um, you know, a light, a light background fabric like a beige linen or something like that with a, with a white thread, you know, looking a bit like white work. And you don't need pre-printed panels, so you can draw your design onto your fabric using um, tailor's chalk or a pen that's going to to disappear by itself. Now I just stopped and checked what I was doing because I wasn't sure if I've lost my way. But no, I'm correct. Okay, so now I'm going to head off this way. When you're drawing your own design, 
you don't need to do the broken lines like this you just draw a solid line and when you're doing your stitches just keep in mind that that stitch stitch length of a sort of length of a grain of rice and the stitch in between is about I mean the gap in between is about half that that length again now if you're drawing your design onto A light back around fabric you could hold tape your fabric up onto the window with your design behind it and trace it quite easily or of course use a light box but if you're using a dark background fabric that's not going to work so in japan for this purpose they sell chakopi like charcoal paper so it's a bit like that carbon paper people used to use when they had to make two top two copies of something when they were typing um, except that it's it's white and so you lay that white paper down with a sort of the chalky side of it down onto your fabric and place your design on the top and then use a stylus to trace and that will push the, the white outline onto your dark fabric. If you don't have a stylus you can use a ballpoint pen where the ink has run out. <laughs> Or if you're feeling brave, you can just freehand a design. So um, you can use this to make lovely bags, embellish jackets um, this one this one will probably be a quilted table runner I've turned panels that I've stitched before into quilts actually why don't I I'll pause here and I'll go and see if I can find my two quilts and show those to you. Okay, so this one is actually a pattern from a, a quilt shop and I feel like I bought it down in Berry, but I can't remember because it was so long ago. Um, I'll have a look online and if I can find it, I'll link it in the description box. I really liked it. It was very simple. It's essentially just squares put together, but on the diagonal. Um, and so I just used a mix of my own fabrics that I had purchased in Japan. Um, I think most of these ones were purchased in Kyoto on Shijo Dori, the main shopping street. There is a store called Nomura Taylor. Very civilized shopping experience when you start picking up big bundles of fabrics. Assistants come and carry those for you to the counter. <laughs> it's, a, it's not like a, some of our stores where you carry everything for yourself. So that's that one. Okay, and this one's a bit larger. This one we call the Mama Blankie. So this is what I pull out when it's cold and sit on my lap. Now we've got a much longer one for my husband, which we call the Man Blankie. Um, 
but this quilt was created um, in a weekend workshop with Monica Poole. So this is her quilt as you go method. Um, and it's her method where you join panels together and put some trucking. <laughs> I think she called them tram tracks over the top um, to hide the joins. And so with this one, when I was doing the workshop, I didn't want to purchase anything new. And I had these little four sashiko that I had stitched. And you'll notice some of the fabrics are the same as what's in the other quilt. I simply used, and this was a scrap quilt, a scrap buster quilt, so I used everything I already had. Um, and the back, hang on, I'll show you the back. So the back again is just all scraps put together. So to me that side looks really interesting as well. And so you can see on the back of the quilt you don't have um, those covers. So the raw seams are actually on the front of the quilt and get covered over with the, with the sort of binding that's sewn across the top. Um, I really enjoyed this process in that I am no good on my machine. Um, I don't enjoy machine stitching, I find it a bit of a chore and this broke it down to make it manageable um, to be able to put it together and machine quilt it for myself. What craft project are you working on at the moment? Have you got something in progress or something you're thinking about? Are there techniques from other countries that you'd like to try that you've seen and are interested in giving a try for yourself? so wonderful now with the internet and we're just so well connected to other people all throughout the world. And we can share our stories, techniques. Oops, not enough. I think because I've done so much of this style of stitching, I find it <laughs> difficult when I'm doing the slow stitching to do the invisible stitching, because that's the opposite. And that you need to do tiny stitch on the front and big stitch on the back. And I have noticed that what I'll often do is turn the piece over and work on the back. And I think it's because my hands are used to doing this big stitch on the front, a big yish stitch, and then a tiny little one through to the back. So I'm at the end again. Once again, I'm going to stop, take stock, work out where the line goes. So I'm here. Probably might take this line down the center and then work back this zigzag. So it's essentially what I'm doing each time is working a line death that's straight down the center. Sorry, I forgot I was zoomed in and you couldn't see where I was going. So I'm going to take this line down the center and then work out my way back up that zigzag. 
So as I was saying, essentially each time you're just working a line with this design, working a line down the center and the zigzags on the way back. One of my favourite things to do when I travel is to do a workshop with people, just to sit and spend time with them, not to zoom past in a bus taking photos, but to sit and spend time with people and learn something from them, make that connection. It makes the travel experience much richer, much more memorable. I think when you spend time with somebody and have that shared experience, it's much more memorable and meaningful than an album full of photos. Now don't get me wrong, I take thousands of photos. <laughs> One thing I've noticed is that when I travel, the photos I take are often quite zoomed in because I'm obsessed with the patterns and the textures that I see. So rather than a photo of a whole tree, it'll be a zoom in of its patterned bark. Or the moss on a rock. Or the... Uh, intricate carved tiles on a roof by the pattern the sun makes with dappled shade. Because again, it's those photos where you've taken time to really stop and observe and to notice the detail. I find they're the photos I connect with more and they trigger memories better than just, you know, the photo of a landmark building or something like that. and again check my path make sure I'm going the right way I can sometimes veer off onto the wrong zigzag okay there's my path there's my center line so I'm gonna go this way I really like sashiko stitching for two reasons one, it's highly portable because you don't need much equipment. You just need your fabric and your thread, your needle and something to cut it with. And so I tend to just carry around the panel I'm working on and this cute little case. So this was a little cat purse I made using a Studio Mio kit a long time ago. And I've put a magnet here. So that magnet, when I, I put take my needle and pop it in the fish, and that magnet secures the point so I don't get hurt, accidentally stabbed when traveling. And on the inside, I have a pair of scissors that I just attach to the magnet with a keychain and so that I don't get lost. And the pouch is big enough to hold the sashiko thread. So just bring those two things together. And 
Again, this is a beautiful Japanese fabric, a yarn dyed woven fabric. So the yarns are dyed different colors and then woven together to form the pattern. It's not um, like printed on or anything like that. You can see the these threads, you know, standing out. been a very very well loved little kitty <laughs> okay now I did unthread my needle that's the other thing that's nice about this it's a big needle <laughs> with a nice big eye Nearly at my end of the thread there. All right, where are we at? Okay. And because I'm right-handed, I find it easiest to work in a straight direction. So the starting point on my right and working in a straight line towards my left hand. If you're left-handed, it would be the other way around. And the second reason that I love Sashiko as a project is that there's no thinking involved other than thinking every now and again about what direction will I take. It truly is very relaxing. It's just the one thread, the one stitch, and so you can get into this nice relaxing rhythm. Yes, I will make it just, oh, just to the end, but not back for that section, never mind. Now, in terms of inspiration, you'll be able to search up lots of Sashiko online, and there's lots of design books out there as well that show you the different stitches not stitches it's the one stitch the different patterns You can see you can do like clamshell shapes. This, this particular design's got lots of uh, circles with different patterns inside. So if, again, if you're doing this one, you're just going to find your line. Yeah, so when you look at it, you might see sort of flowers or circles, etc. But again, you can just find your line and follow it. So you can actually stitch it like this. Up to the end. And you know, just following the lines. So sort of zigzag. This one again, we're seeing a series of triangles, but don't stitch the triangles, stitch the lines, right? So look for them. So you can see we've got um, lines running this way and then lines running that way and lines running this way. I used to know the names of some of these patterns but I have forgotten. So 
if you do such a guy, I'd love to see your projects if you have a way of sharing and tagging me in. Perhaps you have a YouTube channel or a link to the blog where you post them or something like that. And if you haven't done this style of stitching before, I do thoroughly recommend it as something very relaxing to do. Well, I'm going to go and keep stitching. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.